Hello and welcome again. In module 2, we will be focusing on the development of the basis of earthquake resistant design of structures. You must all have gone through the behavior of concrete structures, their analysis and design under different loads, and the various combinations. The purpose of this recall is to identify the behavior of the structural elements in general and individually, particularly for reinforced concrete structures to various loads and their combinations. So what do we know about beam behavior under flexural loads? An RCC beam undergoes tension and compression at the two extreme faces of fibers under flexural loads. The concrete in beam section would be under compression strain and the maximum compression strain at the extreme fiber at flexure due to flexure would be 0.0035 in concrete. The steel bars would be at a strain of epsilon s. Now this epsilon s would be varying depending upon the yield strength of steel. In the analysis and design, the tensile stresses in concrete are neglected below the neutral axis. We know that the neutral axis is the section at which area of the steel in tension would be same as area of concrete in compression. The steel stresses are taken as 0.87 Fy where Fy is the yield strength of steel. The maximum stresses in concrete the maximum stresses in concrete at design load in compression are 0.447 FCK. So if the section is singly reinforced, what we understand is that we can determine the value of XU max by D by the formula given here by the principle of similar triangles. If XU is less than XU max, the section is under reinforced and the section would start to yield with the yielding of steel and later with the cracking in concrete. If XU is greater than XU max, the section is rightly over reinforced with the concrete section cracking first in compression. One could determine the value of XU max by D and easily then for a balanced section what we come to know is that C that's the compression load is equal to T which is the tension load. One could determine the value of XU by D and further the value of MU which is the moment at ultimate moment. So the process of determination of or analyzing of the beam is that first it's to determine the value of XU then from the strain compatibility we determine the value of EST which is equal to 0 0.0035 D by XU minus 1 third we determine the design stress FST corresponding to EST using design stress strain curves next we determine the value of XU from the equation xu equal to fst into ast which is equal to t divided by 0.362 fckb which is which into xu is equal to compression load c then we determine the value of ultimate moment of resistance from mur equal to 0.362 fckb into xu which is the compression load into the lever arm d minus 0.416 into xu now for all conditions the maximum moment in a section needs to be less than the moment of resistance mur similarly one can analyze a doubly reinforced beam section and determine the moment of resistance for such a section it's to be noted under flexure beam may also undergo shear and it requires shear resistance as well. We know stirrups and bent up bars provide 
the required shear resistance. Next we'll be focusing on the column analysis. The column section has actual loads and movements. The amount of eccentricity in a section comes from asymmetricity of the beam column connection. The eccentricity of load leads to the development of movement along the length of the column. The movement m would be equal to p into ex. The pm interaction curve is determined for each column. The idea is to determine the variation of ultimate load pu with respect to the ultimate moment mu. For a balanced section, the area of steel under tension would be equal to the area of concrete under compression. For a balanced section, eccentricity E equal to EB. For compression on the whole column section, with the shift in the neutral axis towards the center of the section, eccentricity would be equal to zero and the load would be actual and there is full compression. For column section with eccentricity tending to infinity, the neutral axis is located outside of the column section and the column section is in tension. The balance eccentricity or least minimum eccentricity of 0 0.005 of D, which is the width of the column, is given in IS456, the Indian standard code for reinforced concrete design. It is to be considered this value of 0 0.005 D is to be considered in design to reflect some amount of structural eccentricity in the column. So what we have is if the load is acting to be P in the column, we can get a corresponding value of the moment M from this curve. Now this curve here is known as the PM interaction curve. Thereby what we also have is that if the load is P is acting eccentrically at EX on a column and the secondary moments due to secondary deflections or buckling that's delta develop in a column section M max would be the maximum bending moment that would develop at the center of the column length. It will be in addition of P E X and P delta max. One can say that primary moments are linear and most secondary moments are non-linear. A complex PM interaction curve would include a non-linear variation of M over P. In addition to the development of secondary moments due to buckling, the column may buckle due to these moments. Say if delta is the drift due to M1 and delta 2 is the drift that's due to M2. If M2 say is greater than M1, one can see that the there is a curvature delta 2 greater than delta 1 and if M1 and M2 are in the same direction then it's a single curvature on the same side of the column. Now this tends to happen mostly in the case of cylinder columns. But if M1 and M2 are acting in different directions, a double curvature may result in the column section. Now this depends on the ratio of M1 and M2. There can be an amplification of moments for greater variability of the ratio of M1 and M2. Thereby, in a frame structure subjected to axial load P and the lateral load H, a drift or a sway delta also needs to be added up to primary 
criteria. Thereby, the overall moment would be M1 at the top end, which is primary component, plus some amount of the drift component of P delta. And third is the curvature component of member stability, which is actually the buckling of column section. So overall, to lateral loads H, the moments in the section are M1 or M2 plus P delta, which is due to the drift, and third, the secondary component of the moment due to the member stability or the instability along the length of the column. In most of the cases, beam is considered to be rigid. Thereby, there is a convex curvature at the point of column beam connection and it's concave towards the inside of the frame at the foundation support. Thereby, moments for a column at B bottom and top support are in different directions. Thereby, the deflection mostly during an earthquake is a double curvature. Building on this basis that we have recalled in this lecture about the concepts of the behavior of beam and of the column to various stresses and to lateral loads, we can analyze and design each of the individual column and beam elements for earthquake resistant design and also their connections. Thank you.